Hey, my name is Fraser and welcome to episode six of my Photon Smasher adventure. For those that don't know, I've been developing a microphone that can listen to light and exploring ways that I can use it to make music. About six months ago, I built some prototypes which I subsequently sent off to friends, musicians and artists all around the world, such as Lula York, who using her modular rig and a laser, we built this amazing effects loop using the Photon Smasher as a way of picking it up. Uh, Alyssa Darubis, who over in the States has been using it with her modular rig and also with some of the educational classes that she runs with the Willie May Rock Camp and Phil Mill, who is a field recording artist based in Poland. It's been amazing to see people using this creation in their own way, and there's something really rewarding about seeing one of my own creations as a part of someone else's creative process. That's really, really cool. So having collected some feedback from these artists, it's time to make some updates to the design. Specifically, there's three things I want to look at changing today. The first one is the artwork. Now, this photo smasher here is, well, should we say, it's been well tested. <laughs> Here's what it looks like without the solar panel. Some beautiful artwork on the circuit board. But as soon as you put that solar panel over the top, it completely hides it. So what we need to look at doing is positioning that text around the edge of the PCB so you can see it nice and clear. The second change also to the PCB is the position of the uh, 3.5mm jack output. It's a bit too far into the circuit board, it needs to be closer to the edge. You can just about push <laughs> your jack lead into the 3.5mm jack but it's not perfect. So I need to move the footprint a bit closer to the edge of the circuit board so it sits nice and flush and it's much easier to connect. The third one is thinking about how we rig the device. At the moment, Photon Smasher is either handheld or placed down on a table. That's fine, but I think there's some other ways that we can mount it, and for that we're gonna need a way of attaching it either to a boom pole or a mic stand. So I wanna look at 3D printing, some kind of mount that allows us to attach it to a standard mic thread size. These are the three things we're gonna look at trying to fix in this episode. Let's see how we get on. First of all, let's have a look at the artwork. What you can see at the moment is the current version of the circuit board. Now what we need to look at doing is positioning those letters so they are around the edge of the PCB uh, so they are visible when the circuit board is attached above it. By moving the text, it's left empty spaces in a lot of the, <laughs> for want of a better word, detritus that explodes out. So what we need to do is look at moving all of these parts so that they fill those gaps and so it kind of feels the same. All of the text is now nice and legible between the solar cell and the edge of the circuit board. What we're going to do now is import this graphic into KiCad, which is the free and open source software that I use to design the PCB. And whilst I've got that software open, we can look at making the other changes to the circuit that I want to do. Here we go. Okay, so we're in KiCad, and the first thing I want to do is import the new artwork and just see how it feels because obviously things might need adjusting once I see it in the context of being on the circuit board. So I've dropped that in. Uh, obviously we're still in this kind of weird schematic view at the moment. So let's jump into the view, into the 3D viewer, and we can see what it's gonna look like. My first impressions are that it is too close to the edge. I am noticing though that the gap between the H and the O here is a little bit big. Uh, and it's much smaller between the O and the T, so I need to bring that O down a bit. Um, it also looks a little bit like Photon's Masher, <laughs> which is like some kind of futuristic kitchen utensil. Made some changes, adjusted the text, etc., etc. Let's uh, get rid of this graphic. Okay, here we go. Nice. And now for the magic trick. Yeah, okay. So, with the artwork done, now I need to look at making a few of the other changes. I need to move this, the footprint of the jack on the bottom, I need to move it close to the edge, and then I need to export these, ready to be sent off to be fabricated. So the next time you'll see these circuit boards, hopefully is me opening up a box uh, and we get to see what they look like in person and start assembling them. So fingers crossed that I can remember how to export them because it's been a while, um, ugh, but we'll see what happens in this next part. Hello, 
So it's been a couple of days since we last spoke. Circuit boards have been exported and sent off and they're just days away from arriving now. So in the meantime, I thought it'd be a good time to get started on this 3D printed mic stand mount. So quite often when I'm using the Smasher, up until now it's all been handheld like this. But what about if there's a light that I can't reach? Or what if I want to leave this in place for a really long period of time, much longer than I can be bothered to stand there? Um, for that, we need a way of rigging it. So what I'm going to look at doing is building some kind of case that this can slide into that I can then put onto a mic stand. And for that, we've got this, which is a little thread adapter. So what I'm imagining is something that the Photon Smasher can slide into. So the Photon Smasher can then sit in this hole here and you'll have plenty of room for the solar cell. Uh, and then what I'm imagining is on the bottom, we'll have just like a kind of large tube. And in there, I can then, in there I can insert my uh, mic thread adapter. The only other thing we need to add here is a space for the cable to plug in. So ideally, you would have the cable coming out the very bottom, but that's exactly where I want the mic thread to be. So what I'm gonna do is simply put a hole in the side of this uh, mic mount, and then have it so that if you just put the photon smasher in at an angle, the, rather than it coming out the bottom, or well you can just have it coming out the side like that. And that way you can still put the cable in and if need be, you could like cable manage it to the mic stand itself. There'll be a hole maybe here that will allow you to plug the cable in like that, something like that. What I've got to do now is model that. And for that, I use a bit of software called FreeCAD. So let's jump into FreeCAD and see how that works. Here we go, this is FreeCAD. FreeCAD is a free computer-aided design software and it's open source as well. It's absolutely perfect for what I want to use it for. I don't need half the features that come in it because I probably barely scratch the surface of what it's capable of. Uh, but there are some fantastic resources out there. I'll put a link down to a few of my favorite ones in the description down below. This is what I'm going to use to model the mic stand mount for my photo smasher before I then take it into my slicer, which can then pair it for the 3D printer. So let's get a time lapse going whilst I remind myself how to use this software and see what we make as a result. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. A couple days later, I have the parcel, the PCBs have arrived. So let's get them open and let's have a look. Ooh, okay. Oh, it looks really good. Here is the previous PCB. And here is one of the new ones. Uh, yeah, the text is uh, fantastic. You can really clearly see where the solar panel is going to sit. There's also a nice separation between the two words as well. And the footprint, um, yeah, at the bottom looks fantastic. So let's cut to a time lapse of me assembling this and then let's have a listen to what it sounds like.
Well, there we go. That's the brand new Photon Smasher in action. I didn't need it for that jam, but I did finish the 3D printed mount. There we go. And um, with a little bit of gentle persuasion, I even managed to get the mic stand mount in the bottom as well. So I look forward to trying this out in the future as and when I need it, but it's great to have it for that particular moment. The Photon Smasher looks great. I'm so happy with the artwork and it sounds just as good as it did before, but now looks even cooler and hopefully is more useful to use. Super excited to share that on the 8th of Feb, I'm gonna be back at Colchester Arts Centre, but this time with my amazing band, Ben Hunt on drums and Sam Hollis on bass. Uh, we've had a couple of rehearsals already and it's sounding phenomenal. And we've even been playing around with using the lighting rig of the venue itself as a musical instrument. So I'm hoping in the next video, I can dive into some of what we've been doing over the last couple of weeks with that. But if you wanna come along, if you wanna book your tickets now, you can do. The link for that is in the description down below. So. It'll be great to see some of you there in the audience having a listen to the Photon Smasher live. My name's been Fraser and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.